first of all, you have to perhaps I have to try and explain what anti dive and anti squat do because generally you don't get something for nothing, and, and this is a case in point. The drivers complained about lack of feel in the handling, that is certainly the case, but you have to look for the underlying reasons for that, and the underlying reasons why the limit handling was somewhat variable and somewhat difficult to manage. Uh, when you apply anti-dive to a suspension system, you angle the suspension links in side view uh, in order to change the way the forces are distributed into the car when you brake and when you accelerate. So just taking the anti-dive case, the, what happens is the, the links are angled in such a way to put a jacking uh, force into the car when you put the brakes on. So instead of all the load, the, the trans load transfer to the front being absorbed by the springs, a proportion of it is absorbed by the springs and a proportion of it is absorbed by the linkage, pushing up on the body. You can continue that philosophy to the point where you could design a suspension system, and I think this is probably the case with the 72, where when you're braking at 1.5 G, you could actually take the springs off the car and the car would still stay uh, uh, you know, above the, uh, lifted off the ground because there is something pushing up on the body. You can see, therefore, that in this situation, the springs are not actually absorbing the road surface. What, is, what, you, what you're, you're pushing against to, onto the road is the suspension linkage, which is a solid linkage. So that's point number one. You do not have a, any longer a spring on the car, in a sense, or a proportion of the springs, uh, the spring absorbency is not there, depending on how much anti-dive you apply. The second point is, when you apply anti-dive, the contact patch, the tyre contact patch, has to move forward kinematically. If you, if you remember the 72, the top link was angled up towards the cockpit. Well, if you can imagine that moving into bump, it drags the, the hub centre forward and the wheel contact patch with it. Okay? This produces uh, a, an effect at the contact patch, which is trying to decelerate the car even faster. So as you are braking, the tyre is pushing forward, trying to instantaneously ac accelerate the contact patch in, a, in the braking direction. Now that's not very good for tyre grip, because one thing a tyre wants, being made of rubber, is to be gently brought up to its limit. If you, sh if you, if you stab on it, it will tend to sh sh push the load very quickly into the tyre, it will tend to shoot it over the, the limit. So hence the effect, we've got two things now. One is the car doesn't pitch, it doesn't uh, have any feel because you don't have any springs on the car essentially. And the second thing is you've somewhat reduced the transient uh, stability of the tyre at the limit of adhesion by shoving the contact patch forward. The same principles apply to anti-squat. And with anti-squat, the tyre contact patch goes rearwards when you're accelerating. So the tyre contact patch moves rearwards, it's trying to throw the car forward. In so doing, it has the same effect. It tends to snap the, the, uh, the, uh, grip, uh, the, snap the grip uh, from its sort of limit behaviour very quickly into, into a, um, a, a slide, into an over-limit condition. Push the tyre over the limit of adhesion more quickly. Again, the car doesn't squat at the back at all, uh, so you don't get any, you get the two double effects. You get no, no feeling of the car accel accelerating through the springs, and you get this uh, transient effect at the tyre contact patch. So those are the, the, the two main disbenefits, if you like, of anti-squat and, uh, and anti-dive. Now, if Colin had you know, applied these geometries to a moderate degree, then we might, on the one hand, never have known that it didn't work because we would have struggled on with it uh, because it sort of was not bad enough to, to cause a, a major problem. But he applied them to such an extreme degree that 
uh, we were, e well, firstly, we were, e were very easily able to uh, understand that it didn't work by taking it off. Uh, but on the other hand, of course, it robbed the car of performance while it was on the car. Uh, and it robbed of the car quite a lot of performance, uh, as, as, as we know.